morning. You have entered the realm of the gods. So give us your mind and your full attention. So you say you deal with esoteric information? I never heard of such. Well, you're in for a treat. Blah talk, blah talk, this is the blah talk. I lean hell bay dropping jewels every day. Blah talk, blah talk, this is the blah talk. Metaphysical, we deal with the spiritual. Blah talk, blah talk, this is the blah talk. I lean hell bay dropping jewels every day. Blah talk, blah talk, this is the blah talk. Metaphysical, we deal with the spiritual. So you claim to be a god? Damn right I'm a god. The maker, the owner, cream of the planet Earth, father, civilization, god of the universe. Mathematically, the information he drop is real powerful. So get your notepad, it's more than an hour full. Watch your jaw, the crew with watch the talk. Indigenous to the land, wherever we stand. First world order, we bring it at home in the first quarter. Invisible lines don't apply, we cross borders. Silly rabbit, knowledge for God. No matter where you resign, large temple of Mars. So don't fret or proceed with hesitation. Just tune in to blog talk to get the information. Peace. Whether you suffer from pain in your back to aches in your knees. Come on down and purchase you some ancestral tea to get rid of all the parasites, toxins, and fleas. Spiritual elevation for cosmic gravitation. So put away the patience, because there's no time to be wasted. Locate the 
on local, way above yet so below, the permanency of non-movement, ATV, above the dome, the trap of freedom, black water, the metal magician, mad scientists on the track, peace. God. You already know, man. Yeah. Yeah. Yo. Bohemian wizardry, you fraud them thieves be killing me. The enemy is close. You both lies on our identity. I feel like he who steps, architect like M. Hotel. Son had the son himself, the guard deadly with the art. I fit dark with a slit heart. You can feel it in your bone marrow before the shit starts. Standing in the cold with a scroll that was written in gold. Behold the old glimpse that was never untold. Infinite like the eight, seven dwelling in your melon. No felon, though the unrighteous say that I'm rebellious. I'm primal, my rhyme suicide. I worship no idol. My style, a load of gems going down in a spiral You stuck in your root, my intelligence passed my cool The God is the truth, every time I step in the booth You stepped on the stoop, got scooped and swooped in my loop Do the knowledge, whack them seeds, get played like flu You wish the son of the saw, a gift from the gods Who rule flying through the sky with golden wings Submerged into the light, naughty by the golden king With the scepter of justice, melanin cultivating she Until we are ethereal, finally becoming one With the right of the sun, so law, souls are raw Magnificent glow with unconditional love Scattered rays for days from the heavens above So below the souls just trapped in the lowest depths of hell Incarnated into 76 trillion cells To break free, we must be refined Masculine and feminine properties combined The devil is the author of confusion 183,000 divisions and religions Denominations that's close gives us the ism Though isn't it written in the Bible that Jesus spoke in parables The scriptures and gospels aren't just historical Many passages weren't meant to be taken literal Most of it is allegorical based on Esoteric principles, Baptist versus Methodist, Pentecostal holiness versus Jehovah Witness, Mormons versus Seven Day Advances, skeptics, atheists, and agnostics, divine and cosmic tactics of the reptilians, lower fourth dimensional aliens. So beware of the draconian Satanists, though they aim to imprison all true beings through ignorance. So we crush the head of Leviathan, battle mind control to fill them with suggestions, brainwashing and indoctrinations, using and religious politics, education, economics, health and labor, entertainment and war, no sex and war. In this chessboard game called like we've all been pawns. Puppets on strings controlled by demonic spawns You can't run with the devil and walk with God You can't run with the devil and walk with God You can't run with the devil and walk with God You can't run with the devil and walk with God You can't run with the devil and walk with God You can't run with the devil and walk with God You can't run with the devil and walk with God Peace, peace, peace. Back again, your host, Dr. Eileen Bay. Oh, first world of radio. We are here. All right, let me get ready to get into tonight's discussion. All right, if y'all don't know, tonight's discussion is metaphysics, esoteric teaching, or sciences, and occult teaching. All right, so um, we will be dealing with that topic tonight. All right. So before I get started, let me bring on my co-host, Brother Fahim Mel. Are you here, brother? Peace, peace, God. How are you doing tonight? All right, all right. We're doing well. We're doing well. How are you tonight? I'm fine, brother. I'm fine, brother. All right, excellent, excellent. Love to hear that. Love to hear that as usual, you know. And um, first of all, it's back in the building, you know. And um, we're going to get started. And for those who don't know, um, who I am, or who Brother Fahim, Victoria and L is. Um, what, tell me your new name, um, Brother um, L. Tell me what, what your new name is going to be here. Uh, my new, well, my, my, my uh, new appellation uh, is going to be Fahim yes. Takamsha mm-hmm. Lutheran L. Bay. Okay, okay, there we go. We, we, we got it all up in there on y'all. All right, all right. So, um, we're going to be speaking with um, Brother Tecumseh tonight. Um, he's going to give his commentary on tonight's discussion, as usual. So for those who don't know, that's how we roll. All right. So uh, first of all, the radio would like to thank each and every one for listening. 
and we have some, basically, I guess you could say we have some things that we need to go over first before we get into the next discussion. Um, for example, we have to get into the fact that we have our event coming up March 17th, 18th, and 19th, three-day event at Expo, Seminar, Lectures. Um, you will see some um, people in the chat or in the conscious community there. And they will be giving lectures as well as also documenting um, information with facts and truths on which that has been discovered, evidence, proof. Um, as well as also, we'll be going over Qigong, Tai Chi, Reiki, Plan, and Healing, applied knowledge, what is called practical knowledge and application. We will be going over all that information as well. So uh, for those that are interested, please go to our website, drlulafe.com, and go to Calendar of Events. That's Calendar of Events. And go there and give us a call at 910-364-9099. That's 910-364-9099. Yes, that's when we're coming to our three-day event. That's March 17th, 18th, and 19th. Once again, that's March 17th, 18th, and 19th. All right, the number is 910-364-9099. Go to our calendar of event page on drlinabay.com. Oh, what's going on? You know, we need to see our people there. You know, we've been doing this now shoot, since 2003. All right, so we need, to, um, we need to see our people there. All right, um, there's nothing else that we need to say except we need to see our people there. All right, so um, let's get into tonight's discussion. All right, everybody know about the Magi and or who was the ancient wise men. And the information which that we see now on the planet, which is the ancient mystery schools, is something in which that prevailed over the whole planet at one time. All right? And it is said that it came by way of the Nagas. Um, and, of course, the Nagas are those, um, not the reptilians in the sense of, what we refer to as the extraterrestrials in that sense, um, in which that you've been um, accustomed to, but talking about the Kukulini energy, all right, those who have risen Kukulini energy in the world pass beyond this veil, all right, beyond this veil. Um, that's what we want to talk about tonight. And that's what we're going to get into. All right, so we know that this veil symbolizes beyond the flesh. The flesh is the veil itself. And the ancient magi discovered that the existence of the spiritual world, that they were more than just humans, all right? And they um, invented the symbols, the symbolism, and the allegories to record their findings. So this is why when you read these ancient texts, such as the Bahá'í Gita, the Hispanishai, um, the Book of Kofa by Day and Night, um, also referred to as um, the evolution in the rising of Ra, um, as well as also known as um, also part of the Hushia, or Hushia, um, as well as the Bible, the Holy Quran, the Lost Books of the Bible, Forgotten Books of Eden. Um, they are recording of these allegories in there and to conceal the secrets from those who will be tyrants. Uh, for greed, fame, and glory, they made it their business to deceive the common cattle and enslave, you know, and, and, and for, for the tyrants who enslaved them, you know, um, by disguising this knowledge so that knowledge would not be destroyed. And so by way of that, some things came out of whack, such as the installation of superstition and, and the promotion of ignorance. You know, um, but the Bible cannot be understood because the maker of it were governed by a desire to exalt the priesthood and enslave the masses. So um, that was never intended. But once they got a grasp of some of this information, and unless you this came out where you get um, the historical origin of Christianity by uh, Professor Walter Williams, he breaks it down how this came about through Philip of Macedonia and his son, Alexander the so-called um, great, who I say Alexander the Saint, um, and his brother, um, Ptolemy Sota, um, called the Rabbi, 
um, how he instituted himself to become um, part of the Egyptian bloodline, um, which, of course, he was not originally part of it. Um, he upsurted it. Now the Europeans, the Albions, come forth from out there from the ancient Egyptians. No, you invaded Egypt and put yourself on the throne. You're not of the ancient Egyptian bloodline. And you receive three degrees of the ancient mystery school, which was consists of nine, and only received those three because Sylvester, the sellout, gave you the ability in order to go forth with those three degrees, which now, of course, later on becomes the three degrees of the masonry. Uh, fellow craftsmen, um, you know, uh, into apprentice, fellow craftsmen, and, mas- and uh, master mason. All right, so the Bible cannot be understood because the maker of it was governed by the desire to exalt the priesthood and the state the masses. All right, but to the end, they personalized symbols and literalized allegories that appeared in the ancient scrolls. And you know that the Bible is from a Older texts, such as the Enuma Elitch, the Epic of Gilgamesh, the Tales of Etana, you know, the Tales of Ishtar, and I can go on from the Sumerian and Mesopotamian texts, which of course um, you, uh, you find portions of those within um, Assyria as well as Acadia, um, as, um, as it's called biblically. All right, this is where this information spread. This is actually what we refer to in the book of, I think, Genesis, the, the same chapter. It speaks of Nimrod, um, how he left from out of Africa and went into um, the Tigris and Euphrates River, uh, river uh, region. This, hence, that's where the term Hebrew comes from. He who crosses over, talking about um, allegedly crossing over from, the, um, from out of Africa into the Tigris and Euphrates um, um, Valley. Um, you know, what is referred to as the Sumerian or uh, Mesopotamian um, area there. All right. So, therefore, to understand the real meaning of these symbols, the nature of the philosophy had to be known. And for every symbol has several meanings. And the meanings of the symbols of the ancient Magi pursued the esoteric meaning of their philosophy. All right. And furthermore, um, I will re- basically, I will. Re- Revelation will indicate how cleverly um, the ancient scribes recorded the mystery, you know, of creation and words that confound the exoteric and enlighten the esoteric. So for the people who always think of something literal, they're the ones who can't understand this information. You know, even when it's brought to them, they'll deny it, curse you out, call you names. But these are the spiritual, these are who I refer to as the spiritual retards, all right, or spiritually challenged. So in the realm of symbolism, one must, must not actually attempt to be too exact because symbols represent thoughts, all right, by their very nature or difficult to embrace. It's be quite impossible to be reduced to a, to a scholastic definition. So since that is the case, when we bring this, these symbols of these allegories of these stories to you, some may have various or different meanings, but they're all applied back to the physical anatomy because this is the body. The body is the temple of God. All right? This is the main thing that we have to realize. So the reason why the exoteric cannot understand the Bible is because it's a book of symbolism and allegory. And um, basically, um, the interpretations and distortions that came by way of the so-called church fathers, who was called, you know, called the Catholicism, or the Catholic Church, the Papal State, or whatever you want to refer to it as, um, you know, in their attempt to make the Bible, you know, literal and historical, you know, that's what they did. But the ancient Magi did not teach that, you know. So the world has always been divided between two million groups, all right? The truth seeker and the truth suppressor. Now, the truth seeker endeavors to free the masses from the darkness of ignorance and give light. And give them light. That's, that's, that's what my goal is, all right? Um, I'm here to share light, you know, um, to you and for you and on to you. 
so that you can go forth and, you know, better yourself. Now, you have the troops suppressing it, who seek to enslave the masses by destroying the light and keeping the masses in darkness. All right? Now, that's what you do have. All right? So the evidence of this uh, constant struggle down through the ages appears in the Bible, in the Quran, in the Baha'i Gita, in the Hispanishad, in the Morocco, you know, and it's the condition that exists in this day and time. So the ancient Magi can still their findings from the truth suppressors and baffling symbols in which they recorded the discoveries of the mysteries of creation and are preserved and have preserved them you know, for those who are worthy and are entitled to know the facts. And how they do that is by gaining knowledge of self. The more that you know thyself, the more you are able to see the symbolism in which that is taking place. However, if you don't know yourself, you have a self-hatred for yourself and for your brother or sister, then you can't possibly understand these higher sciences. Sorry. You won't be, this, this information will not be revealed to you. And you can get the book, The Origin and Evolution of Freemasonry Connections, or connected with the Origin and Evolution of the Human Race. This is by Albert Church Ward. Albert Church Ward spoke about this. He said, knowledge of men being is the highest of all possessions, the highest of all knowledge, and the knowledge the world needs most today. It is the knowledge of which men can do to most good, um, do the most good in all activities of life. And what is it? The knowledge of men being is the highest of all possessions. The knowledge of man being. What is man being? The being of the mind, body, spirit, and soul. That's the highest level. Astrology. Not numerology. Not UFOism. Or these external things that we get that we indulge ourselves into. Not the paranormal or supernatural. Unless the supernatural is coming from inside of you. Unless the paranormal is coming from inside of you. But nothing can tell and tell just about others all the time. That is the downfall. Now, astrology has its place because it tells you the gifts and what you had in your last life and what you came back to on with. This is told through your north node and your south node. All right? So, the minds of the brainwashed cattle or chattel, as I refer to the math, this is the French word, which means animals or troops, or you might as well just use the Jewish word, which is goyim. Right? They are, they are ensnared in a web of religious dogma and scientific propaganda. All right? This is what they, this is what is, what is going on. Well, all one needs to do is rise above this, 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 this mothering blanket and begin to think. So the Catholic Church, called so-called Mother Church, because they acknowledge and worship Mother Mary, especially say that it's wrong and dangerous for men to do his own thinking. This is the first thing that we know is wrong. He will always go astray and reach the wrong conclusion. And so the church contends that it should do all the thinking and its members should accept this dogma without question as they are infallible. But yet, if you go and do the research and study on the Catholic Church over the last um, 1,200 years, you can see that they're not infallible. All right? They're not. As a fact, they have serious problems. And one is a to suppress the sexual energy for which that becomes perverted, in which that produces what is called pedophilia. And the Catholic Church is running rampant with pedophilia. Every time we turn around, there's a bishop or priest of theirs in which that is going through some type of nonsense as such. 
All right? We just seen a video this past week of a cop molesting a 17-year-old. And this was on video. All right? So this is the nonsense for those who have a um, this is the type of religion. Now, understand, when you talk about religion, you talk about the established orthodox exoteric, the external. Um, you know, so this is the problem. Now, it was Egypt or Kenneth or, as you say, Tamari or Tamaray that led the way in giving shape. In its religion and, and through the natural natural high Egypt or Kenneth or right? Tamari so, or Tamaray that so to man's awareness of material and spiritual, natural and ethical duality of this world, they explained it. And so the Kemetic or Tamarian Egyptian philosophy was partly assimilated by the surrounding communities, by the Assyrian or Syrian or Syrian by the Phoenicians, by the Minoans, um, Cretans, who, um, who become known as the Greeks, reaching the latter nation of through secret societies. Right? This is what happened. Now, this information all right, comes by way of us being able to tap our mental, our mind, which which actually extends the whole gambit of, of what we refer to as the universe. And the universe, according to the Nation of Islam teaches, according to the Nation of God, that's teaching 76 quintillion miles in diameter. All right? And it's filled with what we refer to as nine ether, which is the most potent power in all the boundless universes. So nine ether is the original creator. All right? who grows or grew all the universes. And from out of that, these nine ether beings utilize the, the forces that yield energy, bursting energy into one form. That's why it's called the universe, or uni, meaning uni, or unit, one, and verse meaning vertere, to turn a spiral, and spiraling outward from a, um, a single point, and spiral is the same word as um, spirit, which means breath. So you have centripetal force and centripetal force. Push and pull, right? So creation from this word um, 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 means um, create, which means to bring forth or create, to do, to cause and to grow. So meaning growth into form or system of creation, that's what we're talking about, how it was grown, right? So destruction means change in the form of composition. This is why we say that we build and destroy, all right? So uh, we know that nine ether is conscious, and it's conscious gases, all right? It's conscious gases. So it's no coincidence that um, this nine symbol represents life, and our you know um, you know nine, which means to be born or bring a thing into existence. It, it is also the highest um, number in in um, mathematics, right? So that is the original or primary creation. And primus, which primary come from means first. So before the lightest atom, which would be hydrogen, energy existed as a form of um, energy existed in the form of gas. And basically did nine levels of them, from the quark to the um, biat to uh, the or the lead, you go to the subatomic energy of particles. You know, we get the um, electrons and um, the neutrons as well as also the protons. 
So before the weight or sum of any weight registered as nothingness, yet existence. All right? Being the lightest from the first atom or the first form of existing hydrogen. All right? That, that is what's going on. All right? So we talk about what we refer to now as um, dark energy. All right? And um, dark matter. All right? Dark energy and dark matter. No, babe, I'm good. And then we're talking about the, um, the, the, the portion in which that we are able to see, which is what we refer to as the visible spectrum of uh, the light spectrum, which is basically of everything that we can see, touch, taste, smell, all right, in here. You know, because we know that 70% is dark energy and about 26% is um, dark matter. And then everything else, including all stars, planets, you know, is about four, is about four percent. All right. So this is no coincidence that we see the same thing, you know, um, in the King James Bible, um, the forty fifth um, chapter of Isaiah, starting at the third verse, and it says, "I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches." Of secret places, and thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by the name, by thy name, and the God of Israel. And then you go down to the seventh, it says, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. So this is symbolic to um, this dark matter or antimatter, all right, and basically what we see here, all right, so that's what we have to come to the old in my time, all right, so um, we know that NASA discovered antimatter, even in the Earth's atmosphere. Right? This is this is something that they have just discovered not too long ago. This is recent. Now that's deep. You know, that is very deep. Um that they have discovered, you know, this. So when we're looking at it, we're looking at something in which that the whole universe is composed almost completely of dark energy and dark matter and what we refer to as original. For ordinary matter, right? it's not original in that sense, but ordinary matter. So um, we have that, what, the other contents are electromagnetic radiation, which is estimated to be about 0.005% um, close to 0.01%. And then antimatter, right? So the total amount of the electromagnetic radiation generated within the universe has decreased actually from one and a half to, um, in the past, two billion years. Right? This is what it says. All right? And that's deep. Because we're looking at things changing. Right? Because dark matter is hypothetically known as matter that is invisible to the entire energy spectrum or, or electromagnetic spectrum. All right? which accounts for most of the matter in the universe. So, um, basically the existence and properties of dark matter are inferred from the gravitational effects of visible matter, radiation, and a large scale structure of the universe. Um, all right, so dark matter is estimated to constitute basically about to 26.8% of the total mass and 84.5% of the total uh, matter in the universe. Like, this is how some break it down. And so that's, that's important to understand. So that basically means that the remaining 4.9% of the mass energy of the universe is ordinary matter. And that is what we refer to as the atoms, the ions, the electrons, and um, the objects. They form. So 
So this matter includes stars, which produce really all the light we see from galaxies as well as interstellar gas, um, you know. Basically, the mass energy density of the universe, you know, that's the 10% of the ordinary matter that's contributed to it. Ordinary matter commonly exists in four states, which is solid, liquid, gas, and then, of course, you have plasma, which we refer to with the no coal as ether. All right? However, events in um, this, this, I guess you say, experimental techniques and theoretic phases um, that has come forth, such as the um, both um, Einstein condensed or condensation and for um, meiotic condensation. Um, those two are theoretic, you know, the advanced portion of what they call the experimental techniques that they have that has been built these particular stages. Now ordinary matter is also composed of two types. Of particles, quarks, and liptons. All right. For example, um, the proton is formed of two um, of two um, two up quarks and one down quark. All right. And a neutron is formed from two down quarks and one up quark. All right. And I won't get into all of that because I'm getting a little bit too scientific here. But this is what's going on. You know, cold, what we refer to as dark matter, dark energy, or black energy, and as well as ether, or ether, which is plasma. You have the three sciences, or cold sciences, or teachers, which call it ein. I'm so I'm so the earth. All right? I'm I'm so this is as a Sophia, Sophie, and I'm so the earth. All right? So you have limitless, then I'm which is I'm, you have I'm so, which is the limitless light, and I, well, I'm so is the limitless, and um, wisdom. And I'm so fur is the limitless wisdom light. Right? So you have these three. This breaks down to the black matter, the dark energy, the black matter, as well as also called plasma. All right? Now, we find out that this. I am so the limitless, I am so uh, the limitless light created in artificial light within herself. It was called Adama Bra. Right? Right? Adama Bra. Right? This is where you get the Sophia from, or so. You can get the word Sufi from also within Arabic. Now, there is something outside of this realm. All right, it's called um, the resting moon. And basically, the limitless light. Resting moon allows for the creation of form, like human. All right, now, that is how a dollar box was able to form us and put us together. Essentially. And then you have another form of our dollar box, which is of the astral being, thought forms in which they have attached themselves to those who are open up to them, especially those who have less melanin and has what is called the RH um, factor, they are able to be more open to these particular um, entities, attachments, or possessions. All right? And um, this, this is what is really going on here, you know? Um, I won't go so much into it, you know, because we're trying to deal, as you say, with 
quote unquote, the so-called spooky one. But let's just say this, that there's many worlds, all right? There's many worlds. And the average person um, need to pay attention because the communication between yourself and the ancestors is within, number one. But be aware of your thoughts. Pay attention to your dreams. Observe the animals that appear in your life. Right. Look at the signs and the symbolism and the synchronicity. The synchronicity um, 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 that occurs day to day. Right? Because this is when you're going to find the messages uh, for your life that is needed for you. So you have to pay attention. All right? And we recommend that you pay attention. You know, based on everything that you said, you just spoke about, everything that you see, all right? Everything that you see, hear, touch, taste, smell, because even then there's higher levels to those. Most people are just caught up into the lower level, all right? They're just caught up into those particular things. But there's also, let's see, um, for sight, there's clairvoyance. For hearing, there's clear audience. For taste, there's clear guessing. For, um, for touch, there's like chemistry. And for um, smell, there's clear sentiment. Right? We have to extend our average, ordinary overstanding, you know, and extraordinary isn't a good word either, based on the fact that you already have ordinary and then extraordinary means actually something even worse than ordinary, <laughs> all right? And ordinary just simply means um, plain. <laughs> for lack of a better term, okay? <laughs> it just means plain. So, um, how would we know that we're dealing with allegory here? Because even Mason says, some Mason defines you, Mason as a beautiful system of morality veiled in allegory and illustrated by symbols and also all the realization of God by the practice of brotherhood. To reach God by doing good work to your brother or to your neighbor. All right? So this is something in which that is said. All right? Um, you go to the King James Version, Galatians, I think the fourth um, chapter, the 20, uh, I think it started at the 22nd verse, the 26th verse, something like that, but basically says that um, Abraham had two sons and was one by a bond um, made and other one by a free woman. But the one was that the bond woman was born after the flesh. But he of the free woman was by promise. And it says specifically, which things are an allegory? Which things are an allegory? So that means if Abraham, his wife Sarah or Sarah, his other wife Hagar, the Egyptian deity, if this is allegory, then this is something in which that we have to look at. All right? Because even the Holy Quran, if you get the um, Abdul, um, Abdullah Yusuf Ali version, you get Surah 3, which is um, our, um, um, I think it's Al Idram, and which is the family of Idram, which is the house of Idram. I think it's the, uh, that's the Ayat. So this is, I think Surah 3. In Ayat 7, it says, basically, he, it is who, 
has sent down to be the book. In it, verses basic or fundamental or established meaning. They are the foundation of the book. Others are allegorical. Now, why is the Bible, and now the Quran, which is 73% of the Bible, the Quran is 73% of the Bible, the other 27% comes from um, the Vesta Ven, or the Ven of Vesta, which is the um, Zoroastrian text, comes from the lost book of the Bible as the Gatling Book of Eden, the Apocrypha. That's where the other 27% comes from. But those in whose heart is perversity follows the part thereof that is allegorical. Seeking discord and searching for its hidden meaning, but no one knows its hidden meanings except for law. And those who are firmly grounded in knowledge say, we believe in the book, the whole of it is from our Lord, and none will grasp the message except men of understanding. So, it is saying right here that it's portion of allegorical. What does the word allegorical mean? It's a symbolic work, a work in which the characters and events are to be understood and represented or representing other things and symbolically expressing a deeper, often spiritual, moral, or political meaning. It says further, right? Now, you can go and look up the definition. You can use Webster Merriam Dictionary or Merriam Webster Dictionary um, online. And it says deeper. Check this out. Deeper meaning that a story or scene acted out by humans, animals, or mythical characters. Mythical characters. Genre. It says allegories considered as a literary or artistic genre. Now, it goes on. All right? It says a short moral story, often with animal characters, it's just like the Aesop story. Everybody remember the Aesop story as a child? The Aesop story, right? A visible Symbol representing an abstract idea. Now, number three is the deep chart. It says, an expression style that uses fictional characters, fictional, fictional characters, and events to describe some subject by suggesting resemblance in extended metaphor. Now, we have to look at that. And see, when I ask Muslims that, when I ask, you know, Christians that, you know, what are the allegories in the Bible? Now, if Abraham is an allegory, then that would mean that Jesus and Muhammad would have to be an allegory because Jesus and Muhammad claim to be from the bloodline of Abraham, but if Abraham is allegory, which is a fictional character, that would mean that they too could not have existed. So that means that it has that means it would have to have been a name that was utilized by someone who did exist. That's what that means. But regardless on if it was a name by someone who did exist, the Bible tells you, first Corinthians three sixteen, that do you not know that your body or which is you know that you you or the temple of God, and that the spirit of God dwells in you. And if anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. So the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. So regardless of somebody else's temple, or if someone else came in order to set the record straight 2,000 years ago, 1,400 years ago, it doesn't matter. Because you have God within your body right now. What you want to do? First Corinthians six nineteen twenty. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were bought at a 
Christ. It will glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God. Second Corinthians 6, 16, 18. For you are the temple of the living God. And God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. I will be a father to them and you shall be my sons and daughters, say the Lord Almighty. Now, hold on. All right? This, this, this is deep because you have the Spirit of God in you. You have the Holy Spirit in you. You have God in your body. You have the living God who dwells in them, walk among them. All right? So you can have this attitude over standing that you from God or be possessed and overshadowed by a gym or shadow being spiritual entity or an angel because he has a reptilian attached to the first and second chakra from the first and second overtone level of the fourth dimension, all right, your choice. But Second Corinthians 13, 5 says, um, do you not know yourself that Jesus Christ is in you? So once again, you know, that's, that's everything that you're talking about here. That's the whole Holy Trinity right there. All right, that's the whole Holy Trinity. The Spirit of God, which is the Holy Spirit. All right? Remember, we read 1 Corinthians 6, 19, 20. And that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Who is in you? Then it goes on to say God in your body. Then it goes to say Jesus Christ is in you. So if you're looking for a man from 2,000 years ago to come back and save you, obviously this is something about an awakening that you must do. Within yourself. And by this awakening, which is the return of the Messiah, all right, or the awakening of the ancient one, all right, this is what you must do, all right? So um, this has to be understood, all right? Now that's just how, that's how simple it is. Now you can do what you you know, you can do some other things here, you know, and think all these negative thoughts and become possessed by these gems or, you know, these um, entities. But we already know that God is always within you, but you choose not to use the God within you. Rather, you choose to externalize and make everything literal and historical, and therefore you become an open vessel for that possession, for something else to come and walk into you or come and attach yourself to you through your or feel based on your thought process, based on you creating thought forms. All right. That's what's going on. So um we recommend that you do some more research and understand what the Gnostics were saying. All right, the Gnostics was saying these particular verses that I just read are from Gnostic texts. All right? Because they knew that the soul was within you. The soul, as the, as the French philosopher um, Descartes states, the soul is the, uh, the pineal gland is the seat of the soul. Right? The pineal gland is the seat of the soul. It's just that simple. Right? Now, what is that? Well, you know that the atoms of our body are traceable to stars. And they manufacture themselves in their core and explode. The enrich um, ingredients across our galaxy billions of years ago. And for this reason, we are biologically connected to every other living thing in the world. We are chemically connected to all molecules on earth. And we are atomically connected to all atoms in the universe. 
We are not figuratively, but literally stardust. Now, Neil um, 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 deGrasse um, Tyson can tell you this. Astrophysicist. Where are we now? He tells you the same thing. Right? So, the knowledge that the atom that comprises life on Earth, this is what he says. He says that knowledge that the atom that comprises life on Earth, the atom that makes up the human body, are traceable to the, to the crucial that cook light elements in heavy elements in their core from the extreme temperatures and pressure. These stars, the high mass ones among them, went unstable in their later years, then collapsed and then exploded, scattering their enriched guts across the galaxy, guts made of carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and all the fundamental ingredients of life itself. These ingredients became part of a gas cloud that condensed, collapsed, and formed the next generation of solar systems, stars, who orbited planets, were orbiting planets. And those planets now have the ingredients for life itself. So that's when I look up at the night sky and I know Yes, we are part of this universe. We are in the universe. But perhaps most importantly than both of these facts is that the universe is in us. When I reflect on that fact, I look up. Many people feel small because they small and the universe is big. But I feel big because the atoms came from those stars. Now, this is what he says, all right? And he goes on. He goes on and says something else. This is this is from um from death by black holes and other um cosmic quandaries, right? He says so. You made of uh, detritus, detritus from exploding star. Get over it, or better yet, celebrate it. After all, what noblest thought can one cherish than the universe lives within us all? Not only do we live among the stars, the stars live within us. All right? This is what he says. All right? So this is, this is phenomenal because we have a quantum physicist bear witness to the same thing that we just read within the scriptures. That the spirit of God is within you. Jesus Christ is within you. God is within you. That is the Holy Trinity. That is the Holy Trinity. He said something else that's important too. Right? He says there are many atoms in a single molecule of your DNA. As there are stars, as there are stars in a typical galaxy. We are, each of us, a little universe. Right? This is um him talking about um the cosmos. All right, so he goes in on this information. And this is really what metaphysics and what esoteric teachings or esoteric sciences and occult teachings really is supposed to provide you. Even Neil Bohr, all right, he says, everything we call real is made of things that cannot be regarded as real. And quantum mechanics has the profoundly shock you, you haven't understood it yet. All right? And why he said that is because of what we just talked about. That this is phenomenal stuff. All right? This is what he's saying. All right? Um, let me see. For those that need to call Lane, have any questions, give us a call at 563-999- 3738. That's 563-99938. All right. Let me go back to Brother L. Sorry, Brother L. Um, are you here? Yeah, yeah. Still here, Dr. Brother. Yeah, yeah. Still here, Dr. Brother. 
All right, all right. You got anything to add to anything that we've gone over so far? Oh, yeah. Uh, like oh, you said yeah. about uh, the esoteric uh, and the uh, symbolic uh, and allegory. Uh, I was telling one sister, I said, once, once you understand allegory, symbolism, and esoteric science, the Bible, the Holy Quran, the Torah, the Bhagavad Gita, those books, you will find those books fascinating. Right. You'll find those are fascinating books. Exactly. Exactly. That's all you have to do, you know, because she was complaining about she didn't understand the Bible. She said she don't need the Bible alone, and she's just going to deal with other stuff that's simple to her. I said, no, I said, you need to understand the uh, esoteric science and allegory and symbolism. So once you understand that, the Bible would be nothing for you to read or to understand. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, a lot of books I wouldn't be able to understand if it wasn't for understanding metaphysics. Uh, Let us say the symbol of allegory, you know, uh, other books like uh, the the Bible, uh, the, 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 uh, the Hidden uh, Wisdom of the Bible by Joffrey, uh, what's his name? Ah, uh, I can't think of the doctor's name. Two two books, uh, two parts of that. Uh, the Hidden Wisdom uh, right. of the Bible. You talking about Godfrey Higgins? Right, Godfrey Higgins? Yes, yes, him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, right. you know, uh, the books like, uh, I mean, uh, man, uh, even your Freemasonry. Uh, you know, you have to understand ceramics, allegory, you know, to really understand the book, especially the book Morals and Dogma, that most uh, uh, Brother Masons have a hard time dealing with. That's, that's because they don't teach real esoteric or real masonry in the Masonic order. Right. And they really don't. They just study with, they just deal with uh, uh, rituals. You know, but they don't. But they, but if you ask them why certain people in these state stations, you know, what do they represent? They can't tell you. Or as, uh, cosmologically, or uh, uh, esoterically, or any of that. Hmm. Yeah, that's deep. So they just practice super so big. They just go with superstition. Exactly. Exactly. Right. That's no different than um, a Muslim who prays five times a day and make his salat. You know, and don't know the reason for the local positions and what they do for or for, or for her. You know, uh-huh. or, you know, uh-huh. you know, or a Christian who um, prays to get on all the science of meditation. So you put out a call, but then you're not going to sit still in order to receive the answer. So, I mean, yeah, there, there's, there's some problems that, that is um, going on here. So you, yeah. you, you have to correct it. Yeah. You have to correct it. Yeah, the, 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 even the Holy Quran, and the, you, you try to talk to some Muslims, even in the nation of Islam and other Muslim sects, and uh, they are, uh, I mean, they, 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 they don't want to hear it, man. They don't want to hear it. But they're trying to understand the Quran. That's why you, why do you ask them, why do you hear about the sun? Why do they talk about the sun and moon and stars so much? And they really can't really answer the question effectively. No, they can't. Right, they can't. Because they, cause, cause they, cause in one sense, you know, they've been taught not to go into astrology, you know, but yet it's throughout the whole lesson. It's on the flag. It's, um, it's in um, portions of, of the question and answering by Elijah Muhammad to Master Farah Muhammad. Mm-hmm. Where Elijah Muhammad had to answer the question, really one to six, right in exact. You know, about what? He had an answer specifically about a Holy Quran. So what is the Holy Quran? 25,000 years of human history. Uh-huh. Well, well, if they didn't get that sign, you know, there's something wrong because the sun goes through the 12 zodiac signs every 25,000 years or so. So 
what is that talking about? That is talking about astrology. What does the word holy kavod mean? The word holy means helios or halo, which is sun. Uh-huh. And the word what? Or haru or heru, which means sun. And then, you know, um, holy Quran. Quran comes from the word chronos. The Greco Latin word chronos. The word is chronos. Chronos is chronology, which uh-huh. means time. So, some time, some, some chronicles, a chronicle yep. time, by, the, by what? By the sun. That's what Holy Quran means. So, when, so they answered, so, so that was right in the text. You know, but once again, if you don't know the symbology and the allegory, you won't get it. You just read it. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah, this is 25,000 years you know of history. And that's all you do is, is parrot and repeat that over and over again. But yet have no full understanding of the knowledge of what you need. That's right. I, I, and that's the reason for meditation I, I, and for esoteric um, sciences and occult teachings is for you to understand right. the higher right. history. Because say, you know? how many people know what the three wise men are based on? Right. Based on the Orion belt. Right, exactly. The three stars in Orion's belt. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You know, and they they wouldn't know that, you know, because they wouldn't know that the ancient Egyptians were trying to follow what we state within the tweet within the um, Lord's prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. To them, that's as above, so below, as within, so without. Mm-hmm. For that kingdom to come where? To earth, as it is in heaven. So if I'm looking at the stars in the heavens, then what I'm going to put or bring to earth? That is symbolic exactly. to what happened with the ancient Kemites or Tem- Tamaranes or Sumerian, Egyptian. You know, uh, they was bringing heaven to earth. And they did that by way of putting forth those three pyramids on the Giza Plateau, as well as across the world. You find that same pattern in Cambodia. You, see that, you find that same pattern in um, China, in um, what is called um, the Xi'an Providence. You'll find that same pattern in Mexico and throughout um, the Americas in Peru. You know? That same three stars or that same three um, pyramid layout. That is no coincidence. That is no coincidence. No, it's not. No, it's not. But, but once again, the average person wouldn't know this. They wouldn't have an idea, would they, Brother Al? No, they wouldn't. And that's a shame. That's the, that's the shameful part of this. And this is the reason why we tell people to study metaphysics, esoteric sciences, and occult teachers, because this is what you are being controlled with and by. All right? This is no... Look, you talked about what um, um, Neil... Um, the grass Tyson spoke about the grass Tyson spoke about how we are stars. He's not just joking. More than ninety percent of our physical body or body mass is in fact stardust, because mm-hmm. all the elements except for hydrogen and helium are created as stars. Okay. That is the true learning. There's hundreds of billions of people. Right, right, right. You know, so our physical body is composed of of this. Okay? And that's why when I read um, 1 Corinthians 6, 19, 20, or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own, for you were born out of Christ, therefore glorify God in your body, and in your spirit, which are gods, what is that talking about? Well, what price are we talking about? Because Christians believe that this verse is referring to Jesus dying on the cross for us. However, as a metaphysician, we understand that the stars died for us, so that we may live. 
or a star to be born, there is one thing that must happen. A gaseous nebula must collapse. Okay? Uh-huh. So you have to thank these dead stars. Because without them, you wouldn't be here. The calcium in your bones, the oxygen that you breathe, the iron in your blood, were all cooked up in stars that died billions of years ago. Right? And it's no coincidence that 300,000 tons of stardust energy or particles fall to the planet Earth daily. Fall to the planet Earth daily. And you have 76 trillion cells in your body. And one human cell contains 20 billion exponential bits of information. Mm. So what that means is that originally we were created with body cells capable of consuming and absorbing 90% of the cosmic forces and light to which we were supposed to be exposed. However, our cells began to degenerate. They deteriorate to 10% capacity or capability. This is what you get now that only 10% of your DNA is active or coding. The other 90% is inactive, non-coding. And you only use 10% of your brain, and the other 90% is unused. And most people don't believe that. They say, oh, no, we use 1%. Of, that's been debunked. No, it hasn't been debunked. But have you ever looked at an um, individual that they refer to as a um, uh, um, uh, um, um, ignorant savant. What is an ignorant savant? An ignorant savant is someone who, who has, who might be autistic, who has the capability of being able to remember things exactly how it was. They took a um a brother. He was um a um savant. He he was um taken up into a helicopter and was seen and shown the city of New York and came back and grew and painted everything, every skyscraper, exactly where they were from memory. Mm. And you're going to tell me that you think that you use more than, and you think that you use uh, 100% usage of your brain? Are you out your goddamn mind? You can't actually tap into your subconscious or superconscious or magnetic or infinite conscious mind. You haven't been taught to. And what caused us to lose this? It's our consumption. What what, what caused us to lose this or to just be able to what what happened to us deteriorate to this typical capacity of consumption and absorption of this energy? I tell you what happened. We began to extend and lose our energy through the sexual act. Too much of it. Right. And we weren't doing it in correlation to mathematics. If you get Stephen Chang's book. It's called um, Stephen or Stephen Chang. Um, his book is called Dao, Dao of Sexology. Dao of Sexology. In that book, he breaks it down that sexually, if you go into be sexual, it would be based on your age. So, for example, if you're 20 years old, that would be times two or times point two. So, 20 times point two means 4.0, which means every four days you can have sex and not lose your life for it. 30, every 6 days, 40, every 8 days, 50, every 10 days, no, excuse me, every 8 days, yeah, 50, every 10 days, excuse me, 60, every 12 days, and you will not lose your life for it. However, if you're going in between that and you're not, and you're not pulling that energy up, like what Grandma Sifanyata told, told us, right? For nine years, I sat under him, and he would, and, and what he would tell us, you get his book called Jewel in the Lotus by Grandmaster Sangata Sarah Swan. He states specifically 
that you have to raise the energy up for sexual intercourse is circulate that energy. All right? It's called through a microcosmic orbit technique or macrocosmic orbit technique. But he taught us specifically what is known as the cobra breath technique. And you had to be initiated into it in order to get that information. Okay, there you go. I had to um, recharge this um, recharge on computer room. Right, so go and get that go and get that information. Right? Yeah. So the basic, so the basic thing is this that when energy is captured, you do that through the melanin, through the through the melanocyte. All right, your melanocyte your melanocytes have black hole properties. All right, that's what your melanocytes have is black hole properties. So when the energy is captured, the battery has more energy to use in the body. All right? So melanin can absorb a great amount of energy and yet not produce a tremendous amount of heat when it's absorbed. All right? So when you absorb this energy, and because it can transform harmful energy into useful energy, this basically means that the human being can charge up their melanin. Because melanin possesses the unique ability to absorb various energy sources that convert these absorbed energy into reusable energy. Right? And within um, Qigong and Tai Chi, there's three areas called the um, called the treasures, the three treasures, in which that you are able to store energy. You want a long life and you can store energy at the navel chakra, called the lower dantian. If you want love, compassion, mercy, then you can store energy at the heart chakra. All right? Or at the heart. If you want high IQ, then you can store energy at the third eye. All right? Creative ideas, so forth and so on. That's where you can store that. But the masters stored the energy at the lower than Tien, which is the abdominal mind or brain, the abdominal brain. Because scientists have found that within the small and large intestines, that they're not um, neurons. The neurons, they thought at one time just exist in the brain. But now they found out that the neurons exist within your abdomen area and also throughout the body in various mm. places, such as also there's neurons in the heart. The heart itself is a thinking apparatus. In fact, the heart is 500 times more electroma- um, um, more magnetic than even your, your mind is, your brain. All right, so, and of course, when you store energy in here, in, a, in what is called the um, high dantian, that is known as the upper dantian or the, what is called within the Bible in the book of Acts, the upper room. When they say that Jesus came to his disciples in the upper room and he breathed on them and they received the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is talking about you bringing in this cheese or key energy. Right? And so the medium that can be used is music, vibration, sound waves, um, sun rays, sun heat, light rays. Um, you know, these are the various mediums. You know, and according to Dr. Leon um, Edelstein, he says melanin can absorb tremendous quantities of energy of all kinds, including energy from the sunlight, x-ray machines, and energy that is formed within cells during the, during the metabolism of cells. Right? So, in, Frank, in Dr. Frank Barr's theory, he states that matter is shaped and structured by light. Oh. That is what I was talking about earlier. That light is talking about ethereal light. I'm so earth. I'm so earth. Right? And these molecular melanin combinations eat light in order to maintain, expand, and evolve matter. So if you want to learn how to evolve spiritually, maintain your health, and expand your consciousness, you must absorb light. You must eat light. You are Lumavarius. 
which means you are a light eater. That's what you. Are, that's what a melanin, a melanated being is. Is a light eater. You are like what uh, Wesley Snipes did on one and two, specifically of the trilogy of three of um, the movie Blade. He was a day walker. Well, you are a day walker. So right. the, the more highly evolved the species, the more complex the biological capacity to use life. So based on you, on your, on, on your, on your involvement with life. The more you evolve, the more you evolve this matter, you spiritualize. All right? And um, if you get a book called um, The Science of Blackness by um, Hatepu Yamin, he, say, he says this. He says, melanin is black to allow the chemical structure to obtain, retain, store, and generate light and sound energy once it's in once it contacts the molecule. This light and energy is assumed this light and sound energy permits the African to have a higher level of perception and gives them the ability to communicate with the dead, the spiritual world, and the auto space cosmos. Melanin refines the um nervous system in such a way that the messages from the brain reaches other outer areas of the body more rapidly in the original people. Now, this is what he said. This is what he says. And that's deep because now that makes you overstand on the reason why, as Dr. Deborah Blair stated in, the, um, in his video, the metaphysical analysis of the coming catastrophe, he says scientists have blanketed the earth with electric, electrical energy to try to counteract the effects of the changes in the magnetic force field. He says their tent will be as a single ant trying to hold back the tides of an ocean. That's right. Right? That's right. Now, Carol Barnes writes in Melanin, the chemical key to black greatness. He says this. He says melanin gives humans the ability to feel because it is the absorber of all frequencies of energy. Dr. Wilson, Francis Clark Wilson, who just passed this past year, last year, this time, lays salam upon her, she writes that since melanin is a superior absorber of all energy, it is essential to establish this understanding of God and all energy. So anybody saying that um, they don't believe in God, who's an who's a atheist, and all this um, nonsense, you know what I'm saying? Or anybody who's saying that, um, you know, that this is spooky, they're retarded. They are spiritually retarded. This is what we're talking about here. Because the fact that the Albion are white, black melanin, may also help explain why the view of many non-white people, all right? They, white people, lack spirituality and the capability to tune in and thereby establish harmony and justice. All right? Now, this is specifically to those who came through, um, who, were, who was, I guess you say, chosen. All right? And the ones who were chosen are actually these RH negative, in particular, um, um, the RH negative who came by way of the RHD negative. Um, Beings, these underground beings, all right? These so called dinosaurs who evolved, all right? Who, who, these reptilians, as they passed on, they go to the first and second overtone level of the astral plane and they attach themselves to these beings, um, to these individuals who open themselves up, all right? I'm going to keep saying that because this is something that's going on heavily now because um, we are, our energy is being stolen from us. It's just like on Monster Inc. When you see the monsters come in and these monsters um, come through the bedroom door and they scare the child and the child screams and they capture and they capture and they capture the screen and then they take it back to their world, to their world and keep their world going. All right. So nevertheless, with all these energies coming into the earth atmosphere, guess what? We're still light stars, meaning that we are a people who don't get enough natural light or sun. Due to working and living 
indoors under unhealthy artificial light. And you can't help it. That's just what's going on. You got the EMF, which is electromagnetic fields. For example, you got the power lines, the whole wiring, the transformers, the radios, televisions, the mobile cordless phones, the cell phones, the uh, mm-hmm. microwaves, you have computers, you have the other electrical appliances. And all of them oscillate at 60 hertz. But guess what? Good cellular health starts at 70 hertz through to 100 hertz. Okay? And once again, you have 76 trillion cells in your body. So they supposedly oscillate between 70 hertz to 100 hertz. So yeah, the appliances in your home all oscillate at 60 hertz. So that means that they are pur- 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 purposely toned down to bring your way, cellular structure down also, so that you can't vibrate to a higher level. This is why meditation prayer, the creed, positive affirmation, your practice of Qigong, Tai Chi, Reiki, training, healing, these things are essential in this day and time because it helps you to vibrate at a higher level, right? Hell, if you don't want to do any of that, just smile down into your organ. This is just smile. Just smiling sends endorphins from your brain, which is that good feeling chemical throughout your body. And how you know that you like star, and here's some of the symptoms because you have vitamin D deficiency or calcium deficiency. You have seasonal afflicted disorder, especially this time of year during winter, which is called SAD. You have neurohormonal transmitted disruption. You have... Um, Depression, you have fatigue, you're ir- um, irritability, you're irritable, you have low sex drive, um, poor food, um, nutrient absorption, low immune function, thought to suicide. So, you need vitamin D. And vitamin D is a natural hormone or becomes a hormone. You being in the sun. Also, a diet on the um, average, you know what I'm saying? Um, especially if you are vegan, most of most of us don't get enough vitamin B. Right. In particular, folic right. acid, or what's called folate, or folic acid, um, don't get vitamin B12, B6. B vitamins help the body to com- basically to convert food into energy. And produce energy and form red blood cells. So um, energy production is essential, especially when you're practicing the healing art. Right? Vitamin B1 is, is basically needed to help convert the um, carbohydrates we need into glucose. All right? So vitamin B is needed at a, basically at a cellular level to convert glucose into energy. Vitamin B2, vitamin B3, B5, B6, and biotin, which is um, vitamin, um, is vitamin G. All right? So uh, a, a vitamin B deficiency in any of these vitamins, uh, um, uh, any of these vitamins can lead basically to decreased energy production and, and, and fatigue and lethargy. All right? So... It's necessary in order to get um, more green leafy vegetables, such as, you know, of course, you know, some say don't use this because they're hybrid, but um, kale, spinach, broccoli, you know, but of course you can use other green leafy vegetables um, of your choosing, but also you can do um, corella, spirulina, all right, wheatgrass for those that are uh, not, um, who, you know, who is, don't have to worry about wheat tolerance, a tolerance to, um, to wheat products, um, you know, chickweed, you know, these are other herbs in which that are, you know, high 
alfalfa, which are high, you know, in chlorophyll, right? So um, we're going to end the discussion for tonight right there, Brother L. Any closing comments, Brother? Uh-huh. <clears throat> yes, Brother, uh, look like you did another good one. All right, all right. Uh, brother, I'm looking forward to the next one, brother. All right. But if you don't be here, I'll be here for you, though. All right. Well, you know we're going to be here. And uh, once again, we got our coming event. For those that are ready, that, that want to come, share, participate, learn this higher information. March 17th, March 18th, March 19th. This is for those who are ready to go beyond debate, to go beyond um, the foolishness that's going on in the conscious community, and ready to take this thing to a next level. All right? We're not dealing with all that bullshit. We're not dealing with that. We're dealing with high sciences, you know, in order to transform us consciously, you know, our, the, the breath, the mind, you know, mastering of the physical body, uh, anatomy. This is, these are the sciences that we try to call. You know, you know, we we talking about basically spirit transform from the lower levels of cardinal means. All right, we want to be able to go higher in our yeah. evolution, our yeah. mental evolution. You know, when we say in evolution, we're just talking about physical. It's about mental evolution, all right? So that's what we want to go towards. So once again, for those that's interested, give us a call at 910-364-9099. That's 910-364-9099 for our March 17th, 18th, and 19th event that will be coming up three days, all right? To learn more information, please go to our website, com. Go to Calendar of Events. Calendar of events. Calendar of events. Please go there. Well, it's necessary for you to come on out. Well, I can't stress this enough. All right? So what is going on here on planet Earth? For you to get this information. All right? So um, please check us out. All right? Please check us out. Please come. Please attend. And um, basically... So we love you, and um, you know, basically we, we out, y'all. All right, but all right. Any closing statement? All right. All right, well, brother, I'll uh, say this: my wife from my Dakunda. That means peace, family. All right. Peace, family. Washington right. language. Yeah, I say Washington East. Exactly. Thank you. Hey, how I tell you, Washington East. Shaolin, the classified elements, we here now. So all you fruit loop, colored candy, white, peanut butter and jelly, cool ass niggas, you best to duck and rough for cover. Yeah, 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 yo, into the temple gates, cross the fiery lakes, but witness to torture soul and plant upon burning stakes, ascend the terrible, raise the hell to reach heaven gates, fire bomb and cathedrals when I switch my car to stay, regard the animal, from animal back to God, the thorn is true, slight, double you keep a rod to raise a nation, that's indispensable, indivisible, face of principle, relate to digital, outputs to outlooks, temperatures rise in, as the sun of righteousness. This your spiritual guidance in the lion's den. The phoenix of rod sin, spitting bars for wars to the belt of Orion with the eye to Rudy. These faggot devils can't fool me. The violence gave porn and digesting the pig's booty. The sin is the wickedness, lost in the wilderness. We're never at here to just go ahead and slit your wrist. The black card is this. What devils try to exit? We've been there planning crisis until destroyed by ISIS. In the pit of demons, I'm into Kim and Dreamin, converting satanic chords with the base. The semen, sword swinging, decapitator, purple addicted, crystal warm mystic, keep it glow with drinks when I'm lifted. I'm Melchizedek, moving through 50 states, when we trust with just with the gods I relate. Mental alchemist, watch love conquer hate, I emanate golden rays above my head to figure eight. I'm Melchizedek, moving through 50 states. 
Heavenly trust the gist with the gods I relate Mental alchemists watch love conquer hate I am in a golden raise above my head to figure eight In a devil's head, severed on a dinner plate Before the throne of God, all devils will meet the fate Full of amazing dicks, the rise of the future great Imperial, ethereal, sound the trumpets through the stereo Murders with mics, that's why I scratch off the cereal We first creation, send you back to some minerals South Shaolin, double MC is the abbot More risk be the nation, black man's land, we gotta have it Restore the throne, I'd rather kick the savage When disaster strikes, actual facts you can't manage A fool's on deck, sink ships like Titanic Spread a fear across the land, causing a justified panic Amongst the brain dead Zombies, grab this bits of bandits while these wicked overseas collect residuals in their hammock. Corporate folks forever remain rancid, poisoning to the mind, the subconscious damage. A Melchizedek moving through 50 states, only transmitters with the gods I relate. Mental alchemists watch love conquer hate. I am in a golden rays above my head to figure eight. A Melchizedek moving through 50 states, only transmitters with the gods I relate. Mental alchemists watch love conquer hate I am in a golden rays above my head to figure eight Return of the ancient one, the Moorish Naga The dragon rider, a breathing fire Generator, operator, destroyer A self lord and master, instructor A karma sutra, practice the tantra A kriya yoga, a kutalini The resurrector, shishuna, the eater Pingala, awaken the seven chakra To come the avatar, Muhammad the conqueror Put the sword to your juggler Send you to the ether, the water, air, fire bender The earth ruler, I shit in the new era in the saga, eyes filled with terror, every sound of horror, reflection crack mirrors, minds made feeble, dreams crumble, the curse tremble, thieves in the temple, raise the mental, beyond the four devils, you whack motherfuckers, you know what I'm saying, all you goddamn cool niggas out there, you know what I'm saying, they was trying to put that fucking rope around them goddamn throats, you know what I'm saying, cause you didn't, you didn't all this goddamn hip hop, that's why hip hop dead motherfuckers. Yeah, cool niggas, yeah. <laughs> Peace.